हेलो इन पार्ट फोर ऑफ द एम्पलीट्यूड मॉडुलेशन वी विल डिस्कस ई एम डी मॉडुलेशन नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द ए एम डी मॉडुलेशन इफ यू रिकॉल द प्रीवियस पार्ट देन वी नोट दैट इन ए एम सिग्नल एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द कैरियर इज वेरिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू इंस्टेंटेनियस वैल्यू ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन सिग्नल and we also know that if we connect the peaks of the am signal with an imaginary line then that imaginary line is called envelope we also know that the shape of the envelope is same as the shape of the information signal so here we can see that at the receiver if we want to demodulate the am signal so that we can say that if somehow we can retrieve the shape of the envelope at the receiver then we can say that we have retrieved our information because shape of this envelope is same as shape of the information signal before starting the discussion let us put put some restriction that in our discussion we will use the am signal with modulation index less than 1 since we know that modulation index is nothing but the ratio of vm over vc which is less than 1 so it is the case of under modulation now here vm is nothing but the peak of the information signal or message signal vc is nothing but the peak of the carrier signal here we are considering modulation index less than 1 so vm is less than vc now here we know that the minimum value of the envelope is nothing but vc minus vm and here we note that modulation index less than 1 so vm is always less than vc so as a result the difference of vc minus vm will be always greater than 0 for all the time so we can say that our envelope never touches 0 or never crosses the zero line so here you can see that vc minus vm always positive so you can see that your envelope is not touching the zero nor it will cross the zero line the simplest method of am demodulation is nothing but envelope detection because we know that if we detect the shape of the envelope we can say that we have detected our information because shape of the envelope is same as the shape of the information signal so circuit we will use is called envelope detector because we are detecting the shape of envelope so here envelope detector circuit consists of diode capacitor and resistor and it is connected as shown here now we also know that envelope how do we get envelope envelope we get by connecting the peaks of this am signal so here since we are connecting the peaks of envelope peak of the am signal as a result we are getting the envelope so we can say that this circuit detects the envelope so in another sense we can say that this circuit is detecting the peaks so as a result another name of this circuit is also peak detector so let us get an overview of this envelope detector or peak detector so am signal is applied as a input to this envelope detector output will be the demodulated signal having the shape approximately equal to same as the shape of the envelope and with some high frequency ripples in it now this high frequency ripples can be avoided by passing this demodulated signal via low pass filter so after passing this demodulated signal via low pass filter we can get the smooth version or filtered signal whose shape will be same as the shape of the envelope in the sense we can say that with the help of this circuit we can 
retrieve the shape of the information back so let us see the detail working principle of envelope detector here am signal is applied to the input of a circuit now here am signal is nothing but the sinusoidal wave with varying amplitude now sine wave consists of positive cycle negative cycle positive cycle negative cycle and so on so let us assume that our am signal start increasing from the zero so here input of the circuit is nothing but the am signal now initially let us assume that the capacitor is fully discharged so voltage across the capacitor is zero and we are applying our am signal so here we can see that our input signal start increasing from the zero one two three and so on so we can say that at our input signal increases so we can say that our voltage at the diode anode is start increasing capacitor voltage is zero so your cathode is at zero volt and anode voltage is increasing so you can see that your diode will get on and since our diode get on so it will work as a short circuit so your capacitor will start charging so you can see that as your input voltage is increasing shown by this blue line your input voltage increasing your diode will work as a on it will be forward bias and your capacitor start charging with time constant rc where small r is nothing but the forward resistance of the diode which will be very small so as a result your charging time constant is very low and your capacitor will quickly charges to the applied voltage so let us assume that input voltage reaches to the for example maximum voltage of 3.7 so capacitor also charges to the maximum peak voltage of 3.7 now here you can see that after reaching the maximum value your input start decreasing so we can say that the capacitor voltage is at approximately 3.7 and your input is start decreasing so your input voltage is starting decreasing towards zero and towards the minus so we can say that in this case the anode voltage start decreasing and the voltage at the cathode of the diode is approximately equal to 3.7 so here you can see that see that anode voltage is less than the cathode voltage so your diode will be off or will work as a open switch so you can see that during this portion shown by the green line your voltage is decreasing towards zero and towards negative your diode will be get off it will work as a open switch and your capacitor now start discharging discharging via what since diode is open your capacitor will start discharging via this resistor capital r so here you can see that your capacitor start discharging with the time constant capital rc now here you can see that now once your information reaches to the negative peak now it is start moving towards zero and positive value shown via this green line you can say that your input is now once again increasing toward positive value but here you can also see that during the diode off condition diode off condition your capacitor voltage is decreasing via this capital r register so you can see that let us assume that my capacitor voltage discharges from 3.7 to 3 volt now here my input voltage is also once again increasing so you can see that the anode voltage which is nothing but the input voltage is once again started increasing but you can see that until my anode voltage is lesser than the capacitor voltage your diode will be off now as your input is increasing once your input voltage is greater than the capacitor voltage then you can see that your diode will once again get on and your capacitor will once again start charging so you can see that after 
your input voltage crosses the capacitor voltage this blue line shows your capacitor once again start charging now it will charge to the next peak value now as your input signal once again increases so you can see that your diode will once again become open circuit and your capacitor once again discharges through this capital R so here you can see that your capacitor voltage start decreasing now in next cycle once again your capacitor will charge your capacitor will discharge so this charging and discharging of this capacitor repeats now here we can see that this resistor is connected across the capacitor so whatever the voltage is across the capacitor will be available at the r and that voltage is nothing but your output voltage so you can see that your output signal is nothing but the whatever the voltage across the capacitor and your output voltage shape should be same as the shape of the envelope then you can say that this circuit has generated the information signal because shape of the information signal is same as the shape of envelope so here rc time constant is very much important in this circuit so we come to know that the discharging time constant which is nothing but the multiplication of r and c which is very much important and this rc controls the shape of the discharging voltage of the capacitor as a result this rc time constant also control the shape of the output signal of the envelope detector so what should be the value of rc time constant whether we have to take it too much low or we have to take it too much high or we have to take it a moderate value so let us discuss on it so let us consider the case number one that our discharging time constant rc is too much low so you can see that whenever this discharging time constant rc is too much low then you can see that your capacitor will quickly discharge through this resistor so let us try to understand the same thing using this graph and here our uh, blue signal is nothing but the input am signal applied to the envelope detector and red signal shown in the graph is nothing but the output demodulated signal or the signal across the resistor so let us try to observe this graph so here you can see that the red one is nothing but the output voltage and blue one is the input am signal so here you can see that since rc time constant is too much low so your capacitor is quickly charging that is fine but also it is getting quickly discharging quickly charging quickly discharging so as a result you can say that your output signal that is red signal is not following the shape of the envelope so that we can verify over here that if we take rc time constant too much low then we can say that your output signal is not following the shape of the envelope so let us change the rc time constant to high so let us take the case number to that your rc time constant is too much high so if rc time constant is too much high then you can see that your capacitor will take too much time to get discharge via this resistor so let us try to observe the same thing in this graph so here we can see that the blue one is input am signal red one is the output signal which is nothing but the voltage across the capacitor so here you can see that your capacitor is charging quickly that is fine but it takes too much time to get discharge it is very slowly discharging so that you can see over here it takes higher amount of time to get discharge so you can clearly see that your output signal is not following the shape of the envelope here shape of the envelope is sinusoidal but here you can see that since capacitor take too much time to get discharge you can see that it is following the input pattern that is positive cycle but it does not follow the negative cycle of the envelope so here you can say that a negative cycle in the output is getting clipped off so you can say that if you take the rc too much high your negative cycle of the envelope get clipped off 
and this phenomena is also known as negative peak clipping so let us change the value of rc to the moderate one so case number 3 let us assume that the value of our rc is moderate so your capacitor will neither charge discharge quickly nor discharge too much slowly so let us observe this graph so here you can see that your red signal is nothing but the output signal of the envelope detector blue one is the input so here you can see that your capacitor is quickly charging but your capacitor is moderately discharging it is not taking too much time to get discharged nor it is discharging quickly so in that sense you can see that your red signal which is output signal is following the shape of the envelope here you can see that your red signal is following the shape of the envelope with some ripples in the output so here we can conclude that discharging time constant rc must be moderate it must not be too much high not too much low so here you can see that if you take rc moderate then your output signal that is the red one follows the shape of the envelope now how to set or how to find out the best value of rc now the value of rc depends upon the two parameters one is fm another is m fm is nothing but the information signal frequency and m is the modulation index so let us derive the relation between rc fm and m so in deriving the relation between rc fm and m uh, let us first observe this graph in this graph we already learned that if we connect the peaks of this am signal with a dash line so that imaginary dash line is called envelope so here some part of this signal is shown over here and here peaks is connected peaks are connected with the yellow dash line so that is nothing but the envelope of the signal and here the red signal red signal is nothing but the capacitor voltage so uh, here uh, let us derive the relation between rc fm and m so it start with the condition condition of what it start with the condition on discharging capacitor voltage that is it depends upon the discharging voltage of a capacitor so what the condition says condition says that the magnitude of rate of change of the discharging voltage of the capacitor must be greater than or equal to the magnitude of the rate of change of envelope it focus this condition focus on the rate of change of the discharging voltage slope of this line rate of change of that is discharging voltage rate must be greater than or equal to the rate of change of envelope so rate of change of envelope is nothing but the slope of the envelope so this condition says that the slope of this discharging voltage must be higher than the slope of the envelope then and then you can retry the shape of the envelope correctly so let us first find out this two quantity so let us start with finding out the rate of change of envelope so to find the rate of change of envelope if you recall the equation of am then equation of am is nothing but vc plus em of t sin omega ct where vc plus em of t is nothing but the peak amplitude of the am signal now this peak amplitude this bracket term is nothing but the envelope of your am signal so this peak amplitude bracket term is nothing but envelope so envelope equal to vc plus em of t where em of t is nothing but the information signal or message signal and in this particular case we have considered the information signal em of t as a low frequency sinusoidal signal represented by this equation so let us put this equation over here so our envelope is nothing but the vc plus vm sin omega mt so now let us uh, differentiate on both the side 
so a rate of change of annual of is nothing but differentiation of this with respect to time will be vc will become zero since it is constant vm sin omega mt becomes vm cos omega mt into omega m and if you find out the magnitude then you will get the same answer so this is the answer of magnitude of rate of change of envelope so now let us find out the magnitude of rate of change of discharging voltage of the capacitor so to find out this let us start with the voltage equation of the discharging capacitor so equation says what voltage of the capacitor which is discharging which is equal to v max into e raised to minus t by rc so here you can see here v max is nothing but the maximum capacitor voltage from where it starts discharging and we also know that the e raised to x series expansion is nothing but 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on so let us replace this e raised to x with the first two term of the series which is 1 plus x so this term will be 1 plus x where x is nothing but minus t by rc now let us differentiate on both of the side with respect to time so equation becomes differentiation on this side is equal to v max into differentiation of 1 is 0 into differentiation of this term will be minus 1 by rc now if we find out the magnitude then this minus sign will get vanished and our answer will be v max over rc now let us put these two values over here so dvc discharge by dt is nothing but v max by rc and rate of change of envelope which is we have already found it which is vm omega m into cos omega mt so now here we can say that v max is what v max is nothing but the maximum capacitor voltage from where it starts discharging so but here we can see that our capacitor start discharging with a different maximum value here you can see that over here over here over here your capacitor start discharging but with the different initial values so as a result we cannot put it over put it over here the fixed value of v max so how to get that values so you can replace the v max by the equation of the envelope so instead of v max let us replace it by the equation of envelope because with the help of equation of envelope you will get the value of that capacitor discharging voltage so here let us replace this v max by an equation of the envelope now here let us assume that em of t is nothing but our information signal which is a low frequency sinusoidal signal so let us replace this em of t by vm sin omega mt now let us multiply both of the side by 1 over vc so here you can see that if we bring this 1 over vc inside the bracket then what left is vc over vc is 1 then vm over vc is nothing but m because we know that the vm over vc is nothing but the m which is modulation index so vm by vc becomes m sin omega mt and rc as it is here also vm over vc becomes small m modulation index omega m into cos omega mt becomes as it is now if we interchange the position that uh, position of that of rc and this term then we can say that 1 plus m sin omega mt over m omega m cos omega t must be greater than or equal to rc or rc must be less than or equal to this term so here we get some condition on the value of the rc so here rc must be less than this term but here we can notice that this term is also a function of time so we have to find out the minimum value of this term 
and rc must be less than the minimum value of this term so let us find out the minimum value of this term so we know that if any function is f of t and we want to find out its minima or maxima then first of all we have to find out the first derivation of this function let me say my function is f of t then first derivation is f dash of t then equate it to zero then you will get some value of t equals x then you have to put this t equals x into the second derivative and if your second derivative is less than zero then that point is maxima and second derivative is greater than zero then that point is minima so same procedure we have to apply over here so to find out the minimum value of this function what we have to do is first of all find out its first derivation and equate it to zero so differentiation with respect to time of this quantity n equate it to zero so on performing this differentiation this is nothing but the differentiation like d u over v so if you perform the differentiation then you will get the answer sin omega mt equal to minus m now we have to put this sin omega mt equal to minus m into the second derivation of this function and here i have confirmed that you will get that answer greater than zero so as a result you can see that whenever sin omega t equal to minus m that point gives you the minima of this function so let us put sin omega mt equal to minus m in this functions so this term become 1 plus m minus m because sin omega t equal to minus m divide by m omega m omega as it is and cos can be replaced by under root 1 minus sin square and sin is nothing but minus m so cos will be replaced by under root that is 1 by 2 power 1 by 2 under root 1 minus m square now here this is nothing but 1 minus m square divided by under root of 1 minus m square so what left is under root 1 minus m square divided by m into omega m so your rc must be less than this where omega m is nothing but 2 pi fm so here we got that discharging time constant rc must be less than or equal to 1 minus m square raised to 1 by 2 over m 2 pi fm so this is the relation between rc m and fm where fm is nothing but the frequency of the information signal here we have considered the sinusoidal information signal having single frequency fm but in generalized if your information signal contain many frequencies so fm will be replaced by the maximum frequency present in the signal so this is our final equation of the rc which shows the relation between the rc m modulation index and maximum frequency in the signal so let us take one example that in our case our example modulation index is 0.33 and f max signal is 1 kilohertz then what should be the value of rc so in this example we will use this formula in this formula m is given as 0.33 f max of 6 signal is given as 1 kilohertz so if you put these two values into this equation you will get the answer rc must be less than or equal to point 45 millisecond which is approximately equal to 0.5 millisecond so we can say that rc must be less than or equal to 500 into 10 to minus 6 of second so let us assume that capacitor value is 10 to minus 6 which is a 1 microfarad so r must be less than or equal to 500 ohm so these are the values that we should take so let us take the different cases so here let us assume that case number one which is nothing but the rc too much low so ideally we have to keep keep c equal to one microfarad and r less than or equal to 500 but not too much less than so let us consider it is too much low which is nothing but the 10 ohm so c same one microfarad and r we have taken too much low so as a result you can see that 
this blue one is nothing but am signal a red one is nothing but the demodulated or output signal so since rc combination is too much slow so you can see that your capacitor is charging and also quickly discharging capacitor is charging quickly discharging so your output signal is not following the shape of the envelope so let us consider the another case that rc too much high so here the maximum value of r is equal to 500 ohm so let us cross the li this limit and take it 2200 so if we take this r 2200 so rc will be too much high and you can see that capacitor will take too much time to get discharged and as a result you can see that your output signal is not able to follow the shape of the envelope and your you can see that the negative peak of the envelope is getting clipped off so negative peak clipping is also occurring because of the high value of the rc so let us consider the next case so here let us consider the value of r equal to exact 500 ohm so r equal to 500 ohm c equal to 1 microfarad so you can see that your output signal is following the shape of the envelope here you can see that the shape of the envelope is sinusoidal and your output signal shape is also sinusoidal with some ripples but these ripples can be rejected or suppressed via low pass filtering so you can see that in this rc moderate value you can retry the shape of the envelope now here instead of 500 you can still select the lower values of r so let us consider it as a 300 ohm so here you can see that since r is not too much low and rc is not too much low so you can see that your output signal follows the shape of the envelope so here we have completed the amd modulation and in summary we learn that to demodulate the am signal we have to recover the shape of the envelope because shape of the envelope is same as the shape of the information signal for that we we can use envelope detector or peak detector circuit now in the peak detector that is very much important of r and c value so this rc value must be moderate that is rc time constant must be moderate and here is the relation between rc time constant modulation index and maximum frequency present in the signal so via this relation if you find out m and f max sig you can find out the what should be the value of rc so that you can successfully retry the shape of the envelope but in this discussion we have put some restriction that our am signal what we have used is having a modulation index less than one means here we have used the am signal with the case of under modulation but what if we use the am signal with modulation index greater than one and if we apply this signal to this envelope detector then what will be the output so we will consider this case in subsequent videos thank you